Hello there. Priya Ramani was acquitted of criminal defamation in an important verdict relating to the fight for justice in the Me Too India movement. If you follow the news, you wouldn't have been able to escape that headline all of yesterday and today. But of all the reactions that came in, one tweet in particular caught my eye. It's a tweet by my a former colleague and friend, Smita Nair. And, and in the tweet she writes, it just occurred to me how low the bar is for sexual harassment cases. We are thankful a victim was not convicted for criminal defam defamation. Uh, so, I mean, I, I thought this, this tweet uh, is a good point at which to take an, uh, another look at where the Me Too India movement has come maybe two years and a few months down the line, uh, starting from 2018 onwards, the winter of 2018 onwards. And... To talk about this, we have with us Natasha Badwar, uh, the well-known writer, activist, and parent. Natasha, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Thank you. you written, and it's our pleasure to have you on this conversation. You've written publicly in support of Priya Ramani, and you've written and about and followed the Me Too India movement case. Let's start with Priya Ramani herself. I think she said that she took this whole thing as a challenge uh, because she probably felt she had the agency to lead the way for hundreds and thousands of women. Is that how uh, you think she would be looking at it now, right now? Oh, absolutely. Now that the court has ruled in such a brilliant judgment, uh, you know, in her favor, now that the court has thrown out the absolutely ridiculous and shameless defamation case against her by her own harasser, um, certainly, it is a moment of great relief. It is a moment to celebrate. It is a moment to feel, uh, you know, extremely vindicated and also to feel that, yes, uh, if you choose the hard path, if you choose to follow what you believe is the right thing to do, uh, you do reach your destination, you know, that it does actually uh, lead to the the greater good, as uh, Priya says in her testimony, that, that she had hoped for. Um, but uh, I'd like to take you back to the time when actually Me Too was a kind of breaking, uh, you know, on the internet. So uh, as we all know, it started with the Harvey Weinstein case in the US. And yes. because social media has flattened the earth so much, you know, because we are all uh, you know, um, Pakistani timelines and U.S. timelines and Indian timelines are all converging in that one space. It's really a great unifier. So at exactly the same time, a lot of uh, young women, it started with younger women, began to talk about their uh, own, uh, you know, experiences of being harassed. And it was very, very important because, you know, we are in the 21st century. We are all of these women are women with great agency. They are, they, most of them in the beginning were in the media, in advertising, in uh, stand-up comedy. And despite, you know, this kind of um, a structure of um, uh, agency and empowerment, each individual had suffered. And those stories, when they came out as a collective, they created a kind of uh, a wave and stories just kept tumbling out one after the other. I had written a, uh, you know, a column uh, much earlier about uh, when the Tarun Tejpal case had broken, about my own experience of being harassed in a media organization. I shared it again, and I was riveted. I was watching my Twitter timeline. You know, these stories kept coming out. And almost every woman in the media who had begun her career in news, in the media, in the mid-90s, had heard of MJ Akbar as a predator. I had heard of him, although I have never been in any organization where he has worked. My mm -hmm. own uh, college... It looks like we're having an somebody internet. was saying who's going to name the emperor. Uh, is it back? I think it's back. I think it's back. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we could see that people were beginning to refer to this. And I was sitting there and waiting to see who was going to name him. 
And to be honest, it came as a complete shock to me that the person who named him on my timeline, at least, was Priya Ramani. I had no clue, even though she had been my colleague in Mint for almost nine years at that point, I had worked closely with her. I had even traveled with her on the Karwani Mohabbat. I had no idea that she's the woman. And, and as you know, immediately, so many other women, including Ghazala Wahab, um, and, and so many, I mean, Suparna Sharma, Shami Baveja, so many people came out and spoke uh, about yes. either having been direct victims of the man or having witnessed uh, his behavior in the workplace. And, and, and that in itself was a relief to, to know that you could tell the story. There would come a time in your life when you would feel empowered enough to tell that story. Yes, and it must have been shocking when uh, there was a defamation case slapped against Priya Ramani after that feeling, that relief. But uh, now that we are here, a second question I want to ask you is, what does this judgment signify for those who now want to come forward? with yet more names, with yet more horrific experiences of sexual harassment. Uh, do you believe this is going to be precedent setting or do you think this is kind of a one-off kind of thing? No, no, it is absolutely a precedent. Absolutely. I mean, what was the reason for MJ Akbar, misguided reason for MJ Akbar to have slapped a case on one of the 30 women who had told their stories of having been harassed by him the whole agenda behind this case was to silence women, was to make you become so fearful, to push you back, to remind you that if you spoke up, there would be consequences which could destroy your life. So that made that case, this particular case, so significant. So sure, it was a shock when the news broke, but within hours, Rebecca John had declared that she would represent Priya. Within hours, we had Priya's own statement. We had her husband's summer statement saying that they were going to stand firm, that truth was on her side. And it was also a moment when there was already a collective that was standing and uh, amplifying Priya's voice. You know, we were not going to, um, we were not going to not support her now that she had taken such a brave stance and Rebecca had stepped forward uh, you know, as a senior lawyer. So the very, I mean, uh, undoubtedly, these two years of following the case have been years of extreme anxiety and stress, particularly for Priya and her family. Um, uh, you know, uh, when the judges began to change and we've looked, we've seen, you know, we are witnessing the, uh, how the judiciary uh, has, has kind of given um, uh, judgments in, in, the, in recent times. So yes. It was a catch and go situation. We had no idea which way this could have turned. After all, he's an important man. He belongs to the party that's in power. But the fact that despite all of that, such a strong judgment, such a beautifully worded judgment, that speaks not only on her behalf, but on behalf of every Indian woman in the workplace. You know, yes. that validates your fears, validates your anxiety and your power. Uh, so it undoubtedly... It's a fantastic incident. And already, you know, within, within a day, women have begun to share their stories again online. You know, so, uh, so definitely this is a boost in the arm for a Yes, yes. I'm, I, I'm glad you say that. I hope this, uh, the story of this verdict reaches far and wide and as many people as possible in as many languages. One thing I want to take stock at this point in time, Natasha, is where we are two years and several months after those revelations. We had more than a dozen people uh, making these uh, revelations about MJ Akbar's behavior, but we had other people as well, uh, you know, who, 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 who there were people who spoke about uh, other people as well. Now, the defamation case against Ramani has grabbed the headlines and rightly so, perhaps in the last couple of years and last few weeks in particular. But where are we now going back to all those revelations that came two and a half years ago? Uh, I don't know if you can hear me, Natasha, but it looks like, uh, I, I hope you heard that I, question, Natasha. I can hear you now. Okay, so, yes, yes, you I know, 
Um, okay, so the floor is yours. Um, so, Venkatesh, we know that this is not just about one man against one woman, right? We know that yeah. what we are looking at is structural injustice. What we are what we are fighting against is, you know, um, historical uh, prejudice against the woman in the workplace. Uh, the, the fight for gender equality has not not started now. Unfortunately, it's not going to end now. Gender is the final final bastion. We know that across cultures, across classes, women are being pushed back despite the progress that the feminist movement has made and despite the progress that uh, you know the humanist movement has made i mean uh, i wouldn't want to exclude men but we know that patriarchy is very strong and that's what is at work so for anything to change we need structures to change we need entire managements entire boardrooms entire institutions to internalize that this kind of harassment, this kind of injustice, this kind of uh, you know behavior in the workplace that disallows women from uh, you know becoming their uh, their full selves in their careers needs to be stopped. So stopping one man is not going to change the system immediately, but continuing the conversation, uh, continuing to amplify uh, stories like these continuing to point out that sure it hasn't been an easy journey for her it uh, you know so so you can you can take any message but we need to constantly underline the message that there will be a support system uh, people will come forward and hold your hand so don't lose the courage to speak up if you've been harassed yes don't lose heart uh, that's a great message one final question, Natasha, I want to talk about the media's role in supporting these cases. Here again, there are echoes of the Harvey Weinstein's case. It was largely built by the media in that case. Between the New Yorker and the New York Times, you had a couple of reporters at the Times and then a reporter at New Yorker and then a production staff and millions of dollars it cost to really put the story together. Now, the Indian media neither, it seems, has the money to pursue that kind of investigation nor does it seem to have the gumption to pursue such reporting. So is there any other way in, in this scenario for the media to support these cases? Yeah, perhaps that is why uh, it took, you know, social media to come of age to some extent to become the platform on which the Me Too movement broke, to become the platform on which the stories were told. And uh, that in itself is a very significant thing. And as you know, uh, when something becomes big on social media, mainstream media follows suit. You know, uh, the minute the judgment came out, there were so many, uh, you know, people who began to celebrate it on Twitter and Facebook that within hours, almost every mainstream media outlet in India had it as a headline. And today, my husband's in uh, a remote village in Uttar Pradesh. And he sent me photographs of uh, an Urdu newspaper, the Inkalab, and a Hindi newspaper, Hindustan, both of which have the story on the main page. So when justice is done, it really moves everybody. You know, so not only did we have the New York Times and the BBC.com carrying the story as a headline, we had Indian uh, regional uh, uh, newspapers carrying it as well. So uh, we must uh, acknowledge that um, when there is a public push for something, when, when people say this is important to us, the media does respond. And um, it, it used to be the other way around, the media would lead, but times change, you know, the media themselves, uh, mainstream media is not as empowered uh, as they were. Both of us have stepped out of our mainstream media role. And we are media talking so uh, in a way what we're doing is innovating as things go along and we must continue to do that oh that's a perfect way on which to end this conversation as you said uh, social media media they play off each other they play off they amplify each other's messages and let's hope that this is not the last we've heard of these revelations and we'll be able to pursue this to the to the log logical conclusion thanks so much natasha for talking to us thank you thank you venkatesh